God bless you all. This is your victory. It is the victory of the cause of freedom in every land. In all our long history, we have never seen a greater day than this. Everyone, man or woman, has done their best. Everyone has tried. Neither the long years, nor the dangers, nor the fierce attacks of the enemy have weakened your resolve. God bless you all. So Winston Churchill, broadcasting to the Empire on this day in 1945, announced the end of the Second World War. Victory in Europe. And on this, the 75th anniversary, under normal circumstances, we would all have been gathered together in St Edmundsbury, Suffolk's Cathedral, with representatives from civic and military life to give thanks for the end of conflict, to dedicate ourselves to the cause of peace, to acknowledge the loss, the waste, the scarring of war, to commit to the values of freedom and justice and the flourishing of all, which arose out of the ashes of Europe in 1945. But for obvious reasons, we cannot be together today and so we've put together a short service with representatives from our civic and military life, with readings and reflections and music to help us mark this day. And so, although we are separated physically, we are together in time and we are together in this beautiful space, asking God to guide us through difficult times so that we, like those who went before us, can live great, generous and courageous lives on our own home front. I welcome you all. So we gather for worship in front of the nave altar of this cathedral church and next to the silhouette of the soldier, which has been the focus of so many of our acts of remembrance for the ending of the First and Second World Wars with flowers in the colour of the Union flag, which would have been laid by our Lord Lieutenant had we been gathering all together for the great service of remembrance, but now stand in front of this silhouette of the soldier that helps us to remember all of those who gave their lives, those who returned wounded and scarred from conflict. This silhouette bears the imprint, in a sense, of their valour and their sacrifice. Heaviness may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. God has been our refuge and strength, a present help in time of trouble. Dear friends, we've come together on this day to commemorate the 75th anniversary of victory in Europe, when the sounds of war fell silent on this continent. We come together conscious of our need for God's forgiveness for the sin and the desire to dominate others that leads to conflict between people and war between nations. And as we remember the many soldiers, sailors and airmen who gave their lives restraining evil and opposing tyranny, so we also come in thanksgiving for the years of peace that the nations of Europe have enjoyed since the Second World War. We gather joyfully today as those who gathered on that first victory day, glad of each other's company and grateful for the laughter and love that follows times of sadness and loss. But above all things, let us pray that God's will may be done on earth as it is in heaven, as we join our voices together and pray in the words that Jesus gave us, saying, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our first reading 
Pericles' funeral oration for the Athenian state from the Peloponnesian War by Thucydides is read for us by Lieutenant Colonel John Lowe, who is the commanding officer of the Regiment Army Air Corps. He represents the defence personnel across Suffolk. The funeral oration of Pericles, which is taken from Thucydides' history of the Peloponnesian War, was delivered by the eminent Athenian politician as part of the annual public funeral for the war dead. You must yourselves realise the power of Athens and feed your eyes upon her from day to day till love of her fills your hearts. And then, when all her greatness shall break upon you, you must reflect that it was by courage, sense of duty and a keen feeling of honour in action that they were enabled to win all this and that no personal failure in an enterprise could make them consent to deprive their country of their valour, but they laid it at her feet on the most glorious contribution that they could offer. For this offering of their lives, made in common by them all, they each of them individually received that renown which never grows old. And their sepulchre, not so much that in which their bones have been deposited, but that noblest of shrines wherein their glory is laid up to be eternally remembered upon every occasion on which deed or story shall fall for its commemoration. For heroes have the whole earth for their tomb. In the lands far from their own, where the column with its epitaph declares it, there is enshrined in every breast a record unwritten, with no tablet to preserve it except that of the heart. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose command is over all and whose love never fails, let us be aware of your presence and obedient to your will. Help us to accept our share of responsibility with strong heart and cheerful mind. Make us considerate of those with whom we live and serve and faithful to the duties our country has entrusted to us. Let our uniform remind us daily of the traditions of the army in which we serve. When we are tempted to sin, let us resist. When we fail, give us courage to try again. Guide us with the light of your truth and keep before us the example of Jesus, in whose name we pray and in whom we trust. Amen. That reading from Colonel Lowe and the Army Collect shows that during our service today we're representing each of the three military services. We turn now to the Air Service, the Royal Air Force, and Joe Churchill, our MP for Bury St Edmunds, will read the Suffolk Airman's poem. Okay. The reading is taken from a memorial to the air crews of 576 Squadron at RAF Friskerton in Suffolk, 1944 to 1945, and is written by Cedric Roberts in 1995. The title is Listen to the Wind. Stranger, pause here a little while and listen to the west wind sigh. With its tale of long lost men, earth shall not see their like again. Abandoned, quiet, here I lie, time stands still, though years roll by. Runways broken, dispersals gone, the only sound, the skylark's song. Half a hundred years have passed, half a century since I saw them last. Lancaster's black against the sky, air crews young, so many soon to die. They came from England and from distant shores. Volunteers, each one, to defend liberty's just cause. These fractured runways know how many went. Silent witness to youth's blood spent. Her tangled weeds that cover me remain, shrouding my memories of hope and pain. And as I return slowly to land, let this stone in perpetual homage stand. So stranger, continue now on your way. 
but forget not those who it seems like yesterday gave all their tomorrows that you might live for your freedom they gave all they had to give the royal air force collect almighty god who has promised that they who wait upon thee shall renew their strength and mount up with wings as eagles. We commend to thy fatherly protection all who serve in the Royal Air Force. Uplift and support us in our endeavour, that we may be a safeguard unto our most gracious Sovereign Lady Queen Elizabeth, and a sure defence to our homeland. Help us to fulfil our several duties with honour, goodwill and integrity and grant that we may prove to be worthy successors of those who by their valour and sacrifice did nobly save their day and generation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The many RAF bases which continue in our county pay eloquent testimony to the way in which Suffolk hosted so much strength of the Royal Air Force. But now we turn to the Royal Navy and the hymn Jerusalem, instruments and voices from Suffolk's Naval Foundation, the Royal Hospital School, recorded virtually this week the hymn Jerusalem, students from their homes and cunningly pieced together by the school's director of music, Mr. Ed Allen. And so that famous heart stirring hymn Jerusalem. spreadest out the heavens, and rulest the raging of the sea, who hast compassed the waters with bounds until day and night come to an end. Be pleased to receive into thy almighty and most gracious protection the persons of thy servants and the fleet in which they serve. Preserve them from the dangers of the sea and from the violence of the enemy, that they may be a safeguard unto our most gracious sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, and her dominions, and a security for such as pass on the seas upon their lawful occasions, 
that the inhabitants of our islands may in peace and quietness serve thee, our God, and that they may return in safety to enjoy the blessings of the land with the fruits of their labours, and with a thankful remembrance of thy mercies, to praise and glorify thy holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now our New Testament reading. Our presenter, Canon Philip Banks, has recorded this reading from the first letter of John, God is Love, in the Rose Garden next door to the cathedral, where there are so many memorials to Suffolk's dead in the First and Second World Wars. So here we are in... Uh, Bury St Edmunds Abbey Gardens Rose Garden, which has memorials all around, uh, all around me here to those who gave their lives, sacrificed their own safety for the lives of others, uh, and here this memorial remembering uh, those soldiers and their families. And as we give thanks for those who gave in love their sacrifice, so a reading from the first letter of St John, which speaks of love. My dear friends, we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected in us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in the world. There's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears does not reach perfection in love. We love because he loved us first. Those who say, I love God, but hate their brother or sister, are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen, cannot love the God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. And now we turn to prayer. Your salvation is near to those who fear you that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. That glory may dwell in our land. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. And so our hearts turn to prayer. Gracious God, whose will is that the nations of the world should live at peace and in unity. We give thanks for the example of those who laid down their lives in the Second World War, for those whose graves we know that are carefully tended and visited, for those whose resting place is unknown to us, who died in foreign fields, whose bodies lie in unmarked graves or in the great seas. We remember those who did not return home and those who grieved for them. The quiet of the evening hour and the drawing down of blinds. For those who still bear the scars of conflict O Lord, in whose heart of love all our healing is found, grant the balm of your gracious mercy to all who continue to bear the scars of conflict, and hasten that day when men and women may learn once again how to live in enduring peace. This we ask in his name who is the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray for all those who keep peace in, on land and sea and in the air, 
for the personnel of our Army, Royal Air Force and Royal Navy, for those who undertake peacekeeping duties far away, for their families and loved ones. Grant to them safety, unity of endeavour, steadfast hearts and wills, and minds always attuned to the mercy which is your heart of love. Grant that they who serve their country may do so with courage, with discipline and dedication. This we ask in his name, Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Amen. And we pray also for those who continue to be isolated at home during the COVID-19 pandemic. For those who are anxious and fearful, for those who have lost loved ones. We pray for those who continue to research for a vaccine. For those on our frontline services and those who work behind the scenes in our National Health Service, in our shops, our security services, and all who must take hard decisions in public life. May we, like those who built a new society from the ashes of the Second World War, show courage, great-heartedness, love and unity, that we may also build a new community when the lockdown has ceased. Lord Jesus, you brought peace to those who are near and those who are far off. Speak peace now to troubled hearts and minds and give us all the knowledge of your love, your companionship of us, now and always. Amen. Amen. We pray for our own hearts and minds, for war begins always in the human heart. We pray that those who have been at enmity may forgive each other, that we may be freed from feelings of fear and revenge and xenophobia, that we in our day may build a better society. Teach us, good Lord, to serve as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labour and not to ask for any reward, save that of knowing that we do your will. Amen. Amen. We move now to our act of commitment. We felt it to be appropriate that the act of commitment was led by two of the youngest members of our community. And so it's a delight to welcome two cubs from Great Barton who will lead the act of commitment for us now. I am from Great Button Bear Cub Pack and I'm reading this act of commitment prayer on behalf of all uniformed groups in Suffolk. The relief, let us pledge ourselves anew to the service of God and neighbour, that we may help, encourage and comfort others and support those working for the re relief of the needy and for the peace and welfare of the nations. Lord God our Father, we pledge ourselves to serve you and all humankind in the cause of peace, for the relief of want and suffering, and for the praise of your name. Guide us by your Spirit, give us wisdom, give us courage, give us hope, and keep us faithful now and always. Amen. O Lord our God, as we remember, teach us the ways of peace. As we treasure memories, teach us hope. As we give thanks for the sacrifices of the past, help us to make your future in this world until your kingdom comes. Amen. In a moment, we will end our service with the national anthem, which is led by our head chorister and our new member of our girls' choir to be at the cathedral. We will then proceed straight to the blessing which is given by our diocesan bishop, Bishop Martin, 
and we end with the organ voluntary, which is the Spitfire Prelude and Fugue by William Walton. It was written for the 1942 film, The First of the Few, and it helps us to remember that sense of euphoria and thanksgiving that marked the end of the Second World War. But a few words of thanks to those who have managed to put this service together to our organists at the Cathedral, our Acting Director of Music, Richard Cook, our organ scholar, Matt Foster, and William Saunders, our assisting organist. For those who have, at very short notice, recorded readings for the students and staff of the Royal Hospital School for that spirited rendition of Jerusalem. For our own head chorister and girls' choir member, our head verger, Rachel, and our Bishop Martin, who leads us in our diocese. I hope that this evening you'll all be having a big picnic in your homes. It's a chance for us to recapture some of that spirit of 1945 and those uh, spontaneous celebrations that broke out throughout our land. I hope you might take the opportunity also to make a donation to our own home front at this time. The food banks of Suffolk are doing incredibly important work providing food parcels for those who've been hit hard by the COVID-19 pandemic. Their work will only continue and probably get more intense uh, during the days after the lockdown. So if you feel able to make a donation to the food bank that's closest to you, then you can find them. If you just put Suffolk Food Banks into a search engine, you will very quickly find a food bank to do donate to. It's a really good way of us remembering the generosity and the spirit of a new creation that arose from the ashes of the Second World War and help us in our day to build a better world. Thank you so much for joining us for this service. And now a prayer for our Queen before the National Anthem. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, bless our Sovereign Lady Queen Elizabeth and all who are in authority under her, that they may order all things in wisdom and equity, righteousness and peace, to the honour of your name and the good of your church and people, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. the cessation of hostilities in Europe with the Allies' formal acceptance of the German surrender on this day 75 years ago, we know that the war did not end until Japan surrendered on August the 15th, 1945, after the horror of the atomic bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. At least 70 million people were killed in the Second World War, with 450,000 dead in the United Kingdom. Yet as people emerged from this trauma, there was a renewed spirit to work together and to care for the greater good. So the UN was officially established in 1945 and the NHS in 1948. 
we today are perhaps catching a very small glimpse of some aspects of the experience of those who lived through the Second World War, through our experience of this global coronavirus pandemic. As we move through and begin to emerge from the trauma of this pandemic, and remember those who have lost their lives, around the world and here at home, I pray that we too will share the same spirit of working together for the good of all. Let us pray. May God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the queen, the commonwealth and all people peace and concord and to us and all his servants, life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.